What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Today I'm going to do a video on building a mini refrigerator. Um, this is going to be using a Peltier device or thermoelectric cooler. A lot of you have seen my previous video on the uh, Peltier device, the cooling device that I built um, using a, a styrofoam cooler and it worked really well. So today I'm going to build a full scale one and uh, with wood and see how it works. Okay, the basic idea that I have here is I want to have enough room for a two liter bottle on the bottom and then have a shelf and have enough space for some uh, 12 ounce cans on, on top. So roughly we're looking at, I took some measurements, we're looking at about 13 inches tall and then there'll be a shelf and then about another six inches tall on top along the bottom it'll be about 10 inches wide and that'll allow me to get two two liters on the bottom and I don't know how many cans on top for the depth uh, we've got about five inches or so to give us a little bit of room uh, on on these but then we need about four more inches for the back of the Peltier device uh, to be able to have enough room for the the heat sink and fan so we're gonna have about nine inches deep Okay, one thing I wanted to point out before we get started, I'm going to be lining the inside of this with this um, foam board. Um, this is just usually used for the outside of houses um, in between like your brick and um, the frame of the house. Uh, anyways, it's a half inch thick and uh, it, it should be it should be pretty decent. It's not going to be the greatest insulation ever, but I this is just kind of a basic mini refrigerator. Um, so I'm going to use this on the inside, and then the wood's going to be on the outside. So I need to allow for this half inch of of uh, foam on the inside. So basically, I'm going to use this board for the sides, and so allowing for a half inch on the top and the bottom, and then a half inch for my shelf. Um, that's going to increase the top or the side pieces, the, the height of the side pieces to 20 and a half inches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out two side pieces out of this uh, this piece of lumber and uh, we'll start with that. Okay now I have these side pieces made now I'm going to make a back piece. I'm going to make it out of this piece of plywood here um, and I'll make a, a back piece and a front piece I guess at the same time. Now it's going to be 12 and a half inches wide because we need 10 inches for the inside of the cabinet. We need an inch and a half for the width of the sides. And then we need uh, another inch to allow for the, to the foam board. So it's going to be 12 and a half inches wide and then um, 20 and a half inches tall. Okay, now we've got the front and the back made. Now I need to make the top and the bottom. Now the top and the bottom are going to be 12 and a half inches wide by 10 inches deep um, accounting for again one inch worth of the foam and uh, so yeah that'll be the, the top and the bottom will be 12 and a half by 10 inches and we'll go ahead and make those. Okay the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to cut a groove in these side pieces to allow for this shelf uh, and I'm going to use a router with a specific bit. I set it at a quarter inch depth and it's got a bit on it that will cut out a half inch hole and that will allow I'll make the shelf out of this plywood and that will allow this half inch to go into the groove and now you can do this without a router you could just nail it in from the sides nail the shelf in from the sides but I felt like this would give it a little more stability and a little more strength. Um, and, I, and then I can just put it in the, the grooves and glue it and it'll be good to go. Okay, so I've measured from the bottom up thir to 13 inches and then 13 and a half inches. And this is where that groove is going to go um, for the shelf. I've done it on both of these pieces. Um, so hopefully it will come out even. Okay, so I've measured from the bottom up thir to 13 inches and then 13 and a half inches. And this is where that groove is going to go um, for the shelf. I've done it on both of these pieces. Um, so hopefully it will come out even. Okay, here we got the, the groove that we cut. 
It's about a quarter inch in depth and uh, got pretty, pretty good results there. So we're going to do the same thing to the other board. Okay, here we got the grooves. They line up pretty good. So now we're going to go ahead and throw this, this piece together and I uh, haven't decided whether we're going to use nails or screws or what we're going to do, but let's get it assembled and see what we've got. Actually, before we assemble this, um, this is the uh, Peltier cooling device that I built. If you haven't seen my previous video, go look it up. You'll be able to see how this is built. But basically, there's going to be two of these. And uh, so what I'm doing right now is I need to cut the holes in the back, the back part of the refrigerator for both of these. The shelf will go kind of in the middle. This one will cool the bottom part. This one will cool the top part. And then there's going to be a little bit of a gap between the shelves or the, between the shelf and the back so that the air can circulate a little bit. But um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out this other hole to match this. And I've cut a couple grooves right here with the router to allow for the wires from the, the Peltier device to, to go through that. Okay, here we have the back plate completed. Um, I used a little piece of cardboard kind of as a shim to kind of close up the gap a little bit as I was tightening these down. Uh, one thing to make sure, make sure that the hot side, obviously you have both hot sides on the same side and both cool sides on the same side. Also you want to think about cable management as you're doing this. Make sure that you know your your cables can can go somewhere. We're probably going to have to uh, drill a hole in this somewhere and then kind of bring all the wires through it and then seal it up. So anyway, this is the completed back piece, and now we can finally start assembling. Okay, so we're about halfway assembled here. Uh, again, make sure that you've got the hot side on the outside, otherwise you're going to be making an oven, not a refrigerator. And what I'm doing is I'm using some small finish nails. Uh, if I can get some of these out. Um, but I'm also using wood glue. so. Just putting a bead of wood glue along the edge and then nailing into it. Now, obviously, you know, screws might be a little bit stronger, but, um, you know, this doesn't need to be ridiculously strong. It just needs to kind of be airtight. So the glue will help with that. And then on the inside, we're going to do the, the foam and, uh, and we'll, we'll worry about making sure it's, it's insulated and airtight. Okay, here's what it looks like now. Obviously, we don't have the uh, door attached. I need to figure out some hinges for that, but uh, now you can kind of see what it's going to look like. Let me do it like that now. Anyway. Okay, here you can kind of see what it's going to look like. Uh, everything's attached but the door. I need to find some hinges for that, but uh, we've got the, this shelf and I purposely left a little bit of space in the back for for wires and also um, for air movement through this, um, and this isn't a fix. I can I can pull this out. I didn't glue it in. Um, anyway, here's this larger compartment for you know like a some two liters, and then on top I've got uh, space for some cans. Uh, one of these Peltier devices is a 10 amp unit. One of them is a 5 amp unit. So um, can't remember which one is which, but uh, we got. Got a significant amount of cooling here, so what I'm going to do before I get any insulation in it, um, I'm actually going to uh, put the door on it and hook this up and do a little quick test without any insulation. See what kind of temperatures we're going to get inside before I uh, before we go any further. Okay, this is going to kind of be hard to see, but we've got the the fridge right here. I kind of wedged the door in. And it's pretty tight. It's it's not going anywhere, and it's not really gonna let any air in. I kind of had to push it a little bit to get it closed. Anyway, we've got it hooked up. I've got two batteries here, two 12 volt batteries that should give us at least enough juice for probably an hour long test. Got it hooked up to a charge controller that's just gonna act as a load controller and. Um, we're going to run this and see how cold this baby will get without any insulation, just so we can kind of see how effective the insulation is later. Okay, it's hooked up and running. And the 
hot sides are starting to get a little bit hot. You'll notice that I put the fins going vertical on this one, this one going sideways. Uh, I don't know if that has any effect on anything, but I figured I'd, since I'm doing two of these cooler units, I'd, I'd see, um, you know, kind of switch it up a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, let's let this run for an hour and see what happens. Okay, I ran this for a little bit more than an hour, actually an hour and a half or so. And this is why I use this charge controller, because it has a low voltage disconnect. So basically when, when the, the battery bank got down to about 11.2 volts, I believe, it shut everything down. So what we'll go ahead and do is open this up and take this temperature logger, which is what I was using to to measure the temperature inside and let's go ahead and connect this to the computer and see what we got. Okay, here we have the graph of uh, of the data logger and um, as you can see here it got down to 63.8 degrees at its coldest and it looks like the, the voltage started to drop on the battery bank and uh, finally the low voltage kicked off right here. So, anyway, that's pretty decent ambient temperature about 75 degrees and uh, this got it down to 63 inside and that may not seem amazing but remember that has no insulation and it's not perfectly airtight yet so I think we can probably get it down into the 50s um, with insulation okay now what I'm doing is cutting out pieces of this uh, foam board and cutting it out to fit uh, in these slots. I'm going to do the sides, I'm going to do the top, I did the back, and uh, I don't think I'm going to do the bottom because, um, <clears throat> well, I may do it, but that's where um, two liter bottles are going to be sitting and it may be an uneven surface for the bottles if, if it gets dented or, or messed up. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, glue them in place, and uh, then we'll take another test run at this and see what temperature we can get. The next thing we need to do is we need to tape up the seams with some uh, professional HVAC duct tape. Uh, obviously there's my cuts were not perfect. This is not a perfect box. So, um, and I did decide to leave the, the bottom for now. Um, uninsulated but uh, I'm going to tape up all the corners and all the joints this is upside down right now by the way um, and just to make it a little bit more airtight all right here's what it looks like now with everything taped up and so we're ready to throw the door back on this thing and give it a test Looks like the lowest temperature we got now is 58.4 degrees, um, but that doesn't tell the whole story. So basically we picked up about 5 degrees using that insulation. Um, however, the battery bank that I'm using to test with doesn't hold enough uh, amp hours to really power this thing because I'm, I'm pulling, you know, 250 plus watts and uh, so it's it's pulling 20 amps um, and that's these little batteries that I'm using to test with just aren't designed to to be able to produce that kind of amperage for very long so I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board and, and find a, a more suitable test for this that will really truly show what it can do with sustained power alright so here's gonna be our final definitive test I'm gonna change two things with this test uh, number one, here's the battery bank that I was using, um, two 12 volt, 8 amp hour batteries, and then a whole bunch of 6 volt batteries. Uh, that did okay, that provided about a couple hours worth of power, but I'm going to be using my my uh, the, my big batteries that, that uh, my solar panel system uses. So they're going to have a lot more power, they're going to be able to power this thing for all night if I want it to. So anyway, that's the one improvement. The other improvement is since the door doesn't have a hinge on it, 
um, I'm actually going to use some bungee cords to kind of tie it up a little bit, kind of try to keep it a little bit more airtight just so we can get a little bit more accurate measure of, of what this thing can do.